Hey, what's up, everybody? We're here in a singular sound music lab, and I'm here with Camilo Velandia. So, do me a favor. Tell me a little bit about you and your music. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm a. Uh, I'm originally from Colombia. I live here in Miami. Um, I do a little bit of everything, uh, <clears throat> from you know, pop, jazz, uh, rock, you know, and uh, I guess most of the stuff that I do is like. Uh, I play with a couple of touring artists. Uh, some of the artists I've played in the past with are uh, Nicole Iglesias, uh, nice. J Lo. Uh, right now, I'm touring with um, a guy named John Secada and this guy from Argentina named Diego Torres. Some major name dropping going on. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be humble, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, you know, just whoever kind of calls, you know. Really yeah, I mean, I guess I was seeing you had a lot of different genres when you were messing with Beat Buddy. Um, you can all over the place. You can pretty much do any oh, style man. of music, Thank right? <laughs> Thank you. It's pretty cool. All right. Well, you've had amazing touring, and you've seen all of these people, big name people. If you had any advice for like somebody who's up and coming, just starting out, to get to that level, to get to being able to tour with like all of these people, like you were, you know, J Lo and all these people, what would they start? What would advice would you give them to kind of get going to that road? Okay. Um... Well, there's obviously many roads you could take in, in music. You know, you can take uh, the the singer songwriter route. You know, the composer or or you know education teaching. Um, and you know, as, as far as for me, I, I felt like the performance side of it was really the more uh, the most fun one. You know, so um, the best advice that somebody gave me was uh, to learn how to play every style of music as legitimately as you can. You know. Uh, Play reggae like like if it's the only thing that you've ever played, and play rock like it's the only thing you've ever played, and uh, that's one of the great things about the Beat Buddy that all of these different styles are available for you, and they all sound so you know original, so so good. And you know one of the great things about the Beat Buddy is before before this, I used to practice with a metronome where I would you know uh, I would program a drum sequence, and it's 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 always so robotic and, and grueling too. To yeah, program. exactly. Like a, a real drummer doesn't play exactly squared. Yeah, you know? there's there's certain things that you know that a, a live real drummer has that just doesn't. It's not captured in drum machines. You know, little nuances or, here and exactly, there. Exactly, or the beat. You know, uh, what's that called, Mister Beat or whatever. But the you know the beat buddy has those things, and it's just so. Because it's in part because it's a real drummer and it's not quantized, you know. So you're exactly. you're feeling you're feeling a, a real a real drummer, you know, and that's that's one of a that's definitely a, a an important thing in in learning to play with a band because a lot of times you're practicing with a metronome and everything is so precise that you you're relying on the metronome for your time, you know, and then when you're playing with a real drummer, all of a sudden the drummer is going somewhere else. And now your time is gone because you've never practiced internalizing what it's like to play with a real drummer. Get into a, you know? get into a groove with them. Exactly. Getting in, yeah, like sinking in with a real drummer who maybe rushes a little bit when he gets excited or, you know, tends to lay back if, if it's an R&B groove or something like that, you know? So things like that are great about a beat buddy because it's, 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 it's a real drummer, you know? And the fills and everything, they feel very organic to me, you know? It lets you get what you need to do without doing it with a robot exactly yeah because the robot is like the last resource you know we have a really interesting question that we'd like to ask here at the singular sound music lab what do you want written on your tombstone when you die <laughs> um well uh hopefully it's not uh something about a rich guy rich guy falls off stage <laughs> rich guy falls during off performance. stage right Maybe, you know, somebody that, that touched many lives or something, you know, with his music. Uh, I guess that's what we all want, ultimately, as musicians, you know? Like a Jimmy or a Jim. Right. You know, of course, there's always a little bit of selfishness in being a musician, because, you know, it's like you're you're making your music, and you, and you want people to hear your music. You want but, to be remembered. Exactly. It's like, you want people to... I mean, in, in an honest... In an honest scenario, of course, you know, because there's so much, so much music out there, like the music that's on the radio. I don't consider it honest because it's like music that people make to make money. Recycled. Exactly, the, the cookie cutter. But you know, when you hear when you hear somebody that's being honest with their music, you can tell 
because you you know they they're expressing they're expressing their honesty through through their song and, and you you receive that you know so i guess in a way i'd hope to be able to touch people in that way you know would you want somebody else to write it for you or would you like really think about it and write it down like have a key phrase in there before on my tombstone or yeah. my music oh, on your tombstone <laughs> I think I'd want somebody else to write it, you know? Like, if, if somebody else has something good to say about you, then that's so much more. I mean, everybody can say good things about themselves, you know? True. I True that. I'd want somebody else to say something nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Big question here. Any musical performance, if you could witness any event in history, what would it be? Well, uh, I guess this is one of those questions that changes on a weekly basis, you know, <laughs> like the answer. But actually, just because I was watching this thing about Beethoven last night, you know, there was a concert that he did. I, I won't even quote dates because I'll probably get them wrong. But there was this one concert that I, I read that it was four hours long. And he, in this in this concert, he deb he kind of debuted like four, four, uh, four of his pieces that changed the history of music, you know? And, uh, and of course, we all know that Beethoven died broke and alone you know so it's kind of crazy to I, I, I would have just liked to sit there and see people's reaction to this maybe they didn't understand it at the time maybe they're you know, like what's wrong with this guy what is witness this that moment though yeah and then and then like and then knowing that this would then change everything you know it's like there's no Hendrix or there's no even Lady Gaga or whatever you name it you know like everything was changed by this it's like a butterfly effect kind of thing you know yeah that moment is um there's a little bit of tension in there when it, when you don't know if they're getting it, but then they're realizing that this is groundbreaking. Exactly. That's kind of like the, the Marty McFly moment when he's on stage. Right, exactly. Excellent. <laughs> it's a funny, funny thing. Marty McFly, have you seen? There's a funny thing is that the year that, that they were supposedly in, in that, in that scene of the movie, he had a guitar that wasn't released until like three years later or something. Yeah, so, there was there's so many little Easter eggs in that, but yeah, definitely, hilarious. definitely. I know what guitar that is too, and one of the BB Kings, I think. All right. What what inspires you um, in your music? Like, what is your inspiration when you're writing? Well, uh, I'd love to sit here and tell you that the sky and trees inspire me, but unfortunately, they don't inspire me musically. But I think. A lot of times what inspires me musically is other music, you know, like hearing somebody do something that's kind of out of the norm, but it's just, or, you know, organic, like it's, it's just completely, you know, uh, what's the word, you know, like honest, I guess. Exactly like new music honest. experimentation, like rock. Yeah, rock. yeah. Maybe not even, it, maybe not even experimental, but just something that you can tell that it's not being process it's not pushed, it's pushed. not it's not arrogant yeah it's not yeah, being not forced. forced it's not being forced there you go that's the so word. that kind of thing inspires me whether it's uh you know if it's something simple like a like a pop ballad or something or if it's something fancy like a crazy jazz fusion thing or you know you can you can kind of sort of tell when you're really listening if it, if it's if it was something that was just thrown in there to kind of put another track on the record or or if it was carefully put together you know gotcha what um as a professional like why would you as a professional recommend or get even get the beat buddy okay um well the first reason that comes to my head is i don't know how everybody's schedule is nowadays but it seems like i don't have time for anything you know? yeah so for me to like sit down on the computer and program a drum sequence or even even just to take the gear out of my car and set it up to practice like that just doesn't happen you know so the fact that i have a pedal and i can just step on it and it's there that that alone is a huge huge convenience you know so the time management of not having to actually time call management, somebody yeah exactly or time set management much up. is number one uh number two obviously there's just so many different styles like and then you know one of the things you know i guess i i, I love jazz and i study jazz and one of the things that we can always improve you know, it's harmony and time, you know, and, and obviously that we have time with the beat buddy and there are so many different drum patterns that are in odd time signatures, you know, like he's got five, four, five, eight, seven, four, seven, eight, you know, all those things 
those are the kind of things that we go back to practicing with the metronomes. Like when you're practicing 7-4 or 7-8 with the metronome, you get the clicks and you're just relying on the metronome for the time, you know. Whereas with this with this real drummer, all the fills and everything are are kind of what's going to prepare you to play with a real drummer and in, in those kind of like odd meter scenarios, you know. So those kind of things, for me, this is like a vital practicing tool, you know. Um, everything from like practicing you know developing your time and and developing your time feel and your internal time all that is, is, is you know so you definitely get way more actual practice time in when you're using the beat program, right as yeah. opposed to any other method yeah you've had. and not even just the practice time in but just uh i guess what you get out of the practice time you know because so many times you could sit and practice eight hours but then what did you practice you know with a metronome like, exactly or, with a metronome or without or whatever you're doing you know sometimes it's kind of like when you when you sit down and you're looking for something to practice and then you don't really learn anything, you know. So is that what you would say? It would. It's definitely helping you shape. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like it's it, it just forces you to improve because you're you're it it literally is like playing with it. It's like if you have a a drummer in your house that's just waiting for you to like touch him, touch his pedal. <laughs> Somebody shrunk the drummer and just stuck him in there. Exactly. What sorcery yeah, is this? Just, <laughs> right. <laughs> And well, he's cool, just there man. Waiting for you. That's uh, that's that's really awesome that uh, it's doing that much for you. Uh, yeah. I hope everybody gets one of these, man. Get your beat buddy. Yeah, yeah. Get your beat buddy.